Yeah, hello and welcome to our webinar. In today's session, I will show you how you can speed up your BW for HANA migration. The fact that you signed up for this webinar shows us that the road to BW for HANA is still of great interest for a lot of companies. And there are so many questions to ask to be considered for this journey. For example, which approach to choose, greenfield or brownfield, or which old system and which old applications should actually be migrated? Should you consider a new namespace in the new BW for HANA system? Or which tools can support you during this migration process? Today, I will show you how our solution can support you during this process. My name is Malte Haring. I'm product owner here at Intelligence and particular responsible for the migration tool. I will start my presentation by giving you a short overview of what our tool can provide. And afterwards, I will show everything in a live demo. We will import VW objects into our migration tool. We will do some renamings of these objects, export them into a VW for HANA system, and at the end, copy a query from a multi-provider to composite provider. Let's start. Migration is the topic. So what can you expect from our migration tool? It can be used in the following areas. First of all, you can use it to consolidate data models of several systems into one new BW for HANA system. You can, of course, convert objects from old to new BW for HANA object types. For example, a multi-provider into a composite provider, a cube or ODSO into an ADSO. Then you have the option to export these optimized SAP objects to your BW for HANA system. It's also possible to copy BW queries to new target structures, even though they are not following the same structure as the old info provider. It's also possible to transfer objects very conveniently into new namespaces. So you will have the option to do mass renamings. This is also valid for SAP business content. And after all, it's very useful to clean up your existing systems with the brownfield approach. Okay, how is the live demo going to look like? What do I want to show you? We will start with an old BW4 system, which contains old objects with an old data model, for example, with objects like multi-provider, uh, info cubes and DSOs, and we will import one multi-provider consisting of two cubes into our migration tool. After importing these objects, we will consider certain renamings, which we prepared in an Excel file, and do some manual renamings. And after this, we will export the new BW for HANA ready objects into the new system. Okay. Let's start. Let me show you how this looks in the system. Therefore, I open the docu performer and I get into this starting screen. Migration projects in our tool are represented by so-called migration projects. So for each migration which you are doing, you create such a project and you give it a technical name. In this case, for example, you can call it demo webinar. Then, of course, you choose a description and you choose the language. The language which you're choosing here is quite important because this is, has an influence on which languages of your metadata objects are imported. If you don't only want to import one language like English, you can select multiple languages down here for further importation. Let's keep it with English for now. Okay, what else do you need? For sure, for a migration project, you need to select a source system from which you would like to import the old data model, which is here on the left side, in this case, the, uh, with this SID BI2. And then you for sure need a target system. In this case, it'd be w for hana system called ZW2. Okay, we are almost ready to start our migration. But in the last step, I need to load some base objects. This is important to do the offline modeling of the info objects. Here we go. All the necessary base objects were imported and I can activate my project and start it. Okay, the initial screen, which you can see here is our modeling area. Before I now import our multi-provider, 
I will first of all upload some renamings which I prepared in an Excel file. Therefore, I go to the tab Maintain Renamings and I click on the button Upload Renamings. Okay, let's have a look at the structure of this file. Here you can see for three objects, a multi provider and two cubes, I prepared a renaming which I have maintained in column C. So these will be the new names which we will have for the new objects in our target system. Okay, let's close it for now and import this file. And after importing, you will have a list of all the maintained renamings here. The Excel upload is very convenient if you want to rename thousands or hundreds of objects. This means you can use Excel to prepare all the technical namings and you can use the Excel formulas to cut for example namings or to, to use some logic to do the renamings. Okay, let's see what kind of effect these uploaded renamings have. Therefore, I go to the area Import Entities from SAP. Here I choose Import Provider since we want to import a multi-provider and I get into this area. First of all, I need to choose a source system from which I want to import the multi-provider. In this case, it's our system BI2. Then I have the option to select what kind of entity I want to import. So I have the option to select cubes, I have the option to select DSOs, but also multi-provider. Let's stay with multi-provider for now. In this search grid here, you can conveniently enter any technical name or description to search for your object. In this case, I would like to import this multi-provider called 0EPM MP01. For importing it, I simply drag it from the left area into this right import area. Here I can do some further settings. If you focus on the button part here, you will see that I'm able to configure a certain dependency level that should be considered. This dependency level is simply implying how many dependent objects I would like to import. So this multi-provider consists of two info cubes. This, these info cubes consist of info objects and these info objects have maybe attributes or navigation attributes. So um, by setting the dependency level zero, I'm making sure that all depending objects necessary to do our modeling are being considered during the import. The last setting I have to do is I need to check the button that these objects are imported as BW for HANA object types. This means the multi provider will be imported as a composite provider, the cubes will be imported as ADSOs, and the info objects will be left as info objects. Okay, after doing this setting, I'm basically ready to start the import by simply clicking Start Import. Now I'm being asked two questions. First of all, am I sure that I want to import the full dependency objects? Yes, I am. And second of all, do I want to consider the renamings which I was uploading before with the Excel upload? Yes, I want to consider them. Now the tool goes into the source system and collects all dependent objects which are necessary to imp import this multi-provider. On the bottom right, you can see a status line which is showing you at which step the tool is currently working on. You may have seen that I chose objects from the SAP business context, starting with zero. This is possible and it's also possible even though the content is not active in the source system. Okay, the composite provider was successfully imported. Do I want to open it? Yes, let's see how it consists of. Ah, now we see, okay, the two cubes which were part of the multi-provider before became ADSOs. Please also take a focus here on the renamings which were already considered. So if you remember the uploaded Excel, the namings were switched from the business content namespace into our customer's namespace. Okay, um, we are satisfied with this. Now let's have a look into our, our modeling area to have an overview of all objects that were imported. And here you can see even all dependent info objects were imported. But let's focus on the ADSOs now. I'm able to open the ADSOs in this area here. And by opening it, 
I can see all the contained info objects. Now let me show you an additional renaming functionality which we have. Thereby, I can go into this ADSO and click on rename info objects. Here I will have an overview of all info objects which were used to build this ADSO. And you can see that I have the possibility to rename them here. Of course, I don't want to do the manual work object by object, so I would like to use a certain logic to get the objects into my own namespace. Let's, for example, replace the first letter of the technical name by an X. Here you can see now that the tool replaced every zero with an X at the first letter. Due to the circumstance that this was a business content object, the length of the now renamed objects is a little too long. It's exceeding nine by a couple of letters. But no worries, we have the functionality to cut these technical names now. So let's cut them. Now you can see it's almost working, but we have still two conflicts to, to deal with. Due to the cutting of the technical name, I created two objects with the same identical name, which is of course not very convenient. So let's simply manually rename these two and check if the system is accepting the renaming now. Yes, it is. Perfect. You can also see that some of the objects are being grayed out. So this means we are not allowed to re maintain renamings for these objects. And in the tool, this can be restricted by a certain naming restriction list. This list is predefined with certain objects out of the business content, which should never be renamed. But you can also enhance the list with some own objects if you want to make sure they are never be renamed in any migration project. Okay, let's save these settings. And close this window for now. Let's have a look into the second ADSO, which we have. Here you will now see that the renamings maintained in the previous ADSO were already considered. This makes sure you never have to rename an object twice, and this prevents errors made by manual input. So all the renamings which we did for the first ADSO are now applying for the same objects in the second ADSO, which is quite convenient. So nothing to do here. We are almost finished. Let's close this ADSO for now and get to the third part. Okay, since I have these objects now in my migration project and I've renamed them, I want to export them into the BW for HANA system. Therefore, I go to the area export entities to SAP. What I need to do now here is, well, first of all, I need to select a target system where the objects should be exported to. In this case, our BW for HANA ZW2. And then I need to select the objects which I would like to export. As you can see, here you will find our new composite provider and our new two ADSOs. Please consider that this is all happening offline right now. So we haven't started the actual export of the objects yet, which is very convenient because this prevents errors which are being straight down in the target system. So before exporting them, we would like to perform certain checks. And this I will show you now. So to choose the composite provider for export, I can simply drag it again into the lower right area. The tool now conveniently collects again all dependent objects which need to be considered for the export if we want to export this composite provider. You can see that the two dependent ADSOs were automatically selected and also all depending info objects were automatically selected for export. So what's left to do? Now we need to set the info area to which the objects should be exported in the target system. Therefore, I select all the objects and I click on set catalog and info area. So let's quickly select one. Here we go, our showcase info area. The same we need for sure to do for our info providers. Let's go again for the same info area. 
and confirm the selection. Now you can see the status for all the objects is ready for check. This means we can now perform the check if all the objects are valid for an export into the target system. Let me start this check now by clicking on the bottom right on check export. What the tool is doing now, it's going into the target system to first of all check if the objects already exist. In this case, we would never overwrite a target object in the target system. As you can see here on the bottom, there's already two messages that the objects exist in the system and no export will be happening. For the rest of the objects, it seems to be fine. Again, this will prevent a lot of errors in the target system. So we are always checking objects before we are exporting them into any target system. Okay, since the objects are now ready for export, I can actually start the export by clicking Start Export on the bottom right. Of course, the tool now considers the dependency between these objects. So it will start with the info objects, which are necessary to model the ADSOs in the target systems and the ADSO in the end are necessary to build the composite provider. So the, these dependencies are considered. You don't need to worry about them. And you can see step by step, the tool is exporting the info objects into the target system and afterwards activating them. So they are ready for modeling. And again, on the bottom right, you have the status line, which is showing you what's currently happening in the target system. So Maybe let's have a look what's actually going on in the target system. Here you can see that I have our BW for HANA system open in Eclipse. And if you remember correctly, we chose the info area DPSC as our target area for export. So let's refresh this area to see if the objects actually arrived. And here you can see all the XD objects. The X was the letter we replaced for the zero, are already available in the system. Let's go back to the um, modeling tool to see what the current status is. Okay, it's still in activation process. So let's give it a few more seconds. Okay, the activation seems to be finished, as you can see in the status here. Now, the tool is working on activating the ADSOs. Okay, so two or three info providers are already active. And in the end, we need to activate the composite provider. In the end of the whole exporting process, you get visualized that the process is finished. So let's go back one more time into the target system and refresh the info area. Ah, and it seems, okay, our new composite provider is available and also the two ADSO which we exported are now available in the target system. So everything looks fine. What is missing now and what I would like to show you is how you can even copy queries from the source system to the target system, even though the underlying info provider is a different one, and even though the underlying structure, meaning all the info objects, dimensions, and key figures can be different. So let's start this process by clicking on Copy Reporting Elements. Here you can again choose, first of all, a source system from which you would like to copy the query. Again, you have a nice grid for, in which you can search for technical names. This is a query based on our old multi-provider. Now let's select the target system where the query should be copied to. In this case, the system ZW2. Here we would select, we would like to select a composite provider. Here it is, our new composite provider. As soon as I've selected the query and the new provider on which the query should be copied, I can confirm this selection by clicking Next.
Okay, now in this overview, you can see how the dimensions and key figures in the source system looked like and how the key figures, dimensions and variables should be looking like in the target system. Since we did a renaming of all our info objects, this doesn't really fit anymore. But let's confirm it by simply doing a consistency check. With this consistency check, the tool is checking if it's actually possible to copy the old query elements onto the new structure, the composite provider. And now it's highlighting all the conflicts it, it has discovered. So what kind of conflicts do we have? Well, we have some objects which are actually missing in the info provider in the target system. And why are they missing? Well, because we renamed them and added the X as a prefix to all of the info object names. So we are not really surprised that this is happening. Then we have some conflicts that key figures based on the old multi provider are not really existing in the target system, but they can be created, which is fine for us. To show you how we can now do a mapping of the old info objects and dimensions to the new ones, you can click here on Propose Replacement for Technical Names. And now let me explain you why this is working conveniently. Well, the tool is remembering all the renamings which we did before. So all the info objects renamings we maintained are saved in a list and this list is used to propose the renamings even here in the query area for the query elements. So you can see that all the info object names which were renamed are now replaced on the left side. Let's do another consistency check how to check how it looks now. Well, it's almost fine. Um, the last step we need to do, we need to rename the key figures in the new structure and maybe need to rename the variables in the new structure. Let's do one more consistency check. Well, now everything is green or blue, just fine for us. This means we can apply the target values and start the creation process of the query. As soon as the query is finished, the tool will give us a return code zero to confirm that everything was working fine. Let's confirm this by going into the target system and refresh the area one more time. And here you will see our new query and the new calculated KPIs based on the new HANA Composite Provider. That's how easy it can be. Okay. Let's go back to the presentation. So this was the live demo. Um, of course, this is not everything that needs to be done. There are some further effects which you need to consider. For example, if there are any dependencies in the old data model, you need to check these dependencies as well in the target system in the new data model. Therefore, we can recommend to check out our analysis tool in the DocuPerformer because this provides a lot of analysis functionalities which will support you during this analysis process. For example, we provide a very powerful ABAP scan and very powerful where used analysis, which are exceeding the SAP standard by far. You might have also noticed that we didn't migrate transformations. This is currently not provided, but we think that it makes sense to review existing transformations anyways in respect of HANA pushdown possibilities. So in case you go to BW for HANA, you would like to use the full potential of the HANA. This means you should review these transformations in any way. You also saw our migration projects and sometimes customers ask us how to use these migration projects. Like in our understanding, we use these or we, we advise to use the migration projects to coordinate your migration work. So you could, for example, create one migration project for each data model which you would like to migrate, but you can also use them to divide teams and dependencies between teams who are doing the migration work. Okay, let's uh, sum up the benefits in general which our tool is providing. First of all, easy co collaboration. With the migration projects, you can coordinate your work at a maximum. You saw that it's very easy to 
to transfer your objects into new naming conventions by doing mass renamings via Excel uploads or even in the UI. You could also see how the renamings were intelligently reused in other places of the tool. Remember, for example, the reuse of the renamings in the query copy tool. Then you saw the automated export and the implemented checks, which are preventing errors. OK. Let me tell you what advantages we provide compared to the SAP standard migration process. Well, first of all, we have the mass renaming functionality, which SAP is not providing. Then the query copy is possible, even though the underlying info providers have different dimensions, different structures, and different key figures. The coordination of the data model migration is possible via migration projects. This is also something that SAP is not providing. And last of all, we offer you a simplified and user-friendly interface, which is very convenient if you compare it, for example, to the VW 400 conversion cockpit. That's it from my side. I thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you soon in our future webinars. Goodbye.